Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. Today, in the studio, we're delighted to have Stefan Thompson. Stefan is a filmmaker and is of Polish heritage. Stefan, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Nicholas. My pleasure. One of the films that you have made, which is available for people to see on YouTube, yes. is, of course, Searching for the Fatherland. Yes. Could you say a few words about what inspired you to make the film and about your heritage as a Pole who was brought up, essentially, in your early life, at least in the United Kingdom? The film, in short, I mean, it, it's difficult to call it a, f a film because it was very, very amateurish. It was filmed, amongst other things, on a phone. So, it, you know, on a, as, as regards to filmmaking, it's a very amateurish piece, but it's very raw. I think it has a, a, a very raw and honest quality to it, which I, looking back, despite the, the quality shortcomings of the film is actually quite endearing, uh, even if I say so myself. Of course. But, um, but generally speaking, the, 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 what inspired me to make the film, I, after my studies when I was 21, I, I moved to Poland and I was meeting a, a lot of, I spent a, basically I did a, a gap year after, after university. I came here to Warsaw and I, I was meeting a lot of war veterans. I was meeting a lot of people involved in the opposition during communist times. And I posted a few of the photos on Facebook and, and some of my friends started telling me to, to sort of film it. Right. And without knowing I'd make a film, I ended up recording some of those conversations. And then after about a, a year of, of these conversations, I realized that it was editable into a film which related more or less my own personal pursuit of the idea of what, what a, a country or a homeland is. The word fatherland in English, obviously, the, the connotations are quite obvious and, and usually negative. The word oichizna, despite being the root of it being oichitz, father, I, I think that the, the, is not necessarily accurate. I don't necessarily think that Poland isn't a fatherland in the German sense of the no, word. No. I think it is more of a... Um, Definitely, I think to me, Poland at least, has, especially in the context of my mother being being Polish or you know, sort of Polish, sort of Polish but British born, um, has a there's a connotation of, of motherland to it, there's a softness to it, there's a romanticism to it, and that's that's what the film is. It's a it's a it's a pursuit of someone who's who's come back to the homeland of his great grandparents on my mother's side, and tries to reconnect with his roots, and I try to explain in it. Not necessarily, actually, it wasn't even for the viewer's purpose, it was for my own purpose, it was a very personal journey. It's a voyage of self-discovery. Exactly. That's what the film is, in, in short, yes. And, and, and just just because it's very interesting, how did your family end up being in the UK? Because I think you were telling me earlier that the, the last member of your family sort of, to have been born in Poland was sort of in the, was the end of the, in, the, the, end of the 19th actually, century. It was actually, yes, ironically, yes. Um, my, my grandmother was born in, in Copenhagen in 1920, um, and my, actually, I suppose my grandfather was born in, in what used to be Poland. But um, my great-grandfather was ambassador to, to, to London in the 1930s. And uh, when the war started, my grandmother, who was in Poland at the time, left. And through a very roundabout route, ended up in London. And my grandfather at the time, so they weren't, my grandparents weren't married before the war. They didn't know each other. My grandfather was in the diplomatic service in right. Brazil. And the moment the war started, he abandoned his, his post to come to the... In fact, he wasn't desperate to fight. He came to the UK where he trained as a, a silent and unseen, as they're called in, in, uh, in English. And um, during a training exercise, broke his leg. Ah. So it was never dropped down into Poland. Oh, that's and that's how they, they, they both ended up in Poland. They both ended up in the UK, despite desperately not wanting to be in the UK. Neither of them ever particularly liked the United Kingdom. Um, both were very, very keen on going back to Poland, but the communist realities of the time didn't make it possible. So they, they stayed, and that's where my mother was born. And So I sort of completed that journey, I think, by, by returning. Um, I mean, returning is an interesting way of putting it, because yes. I... Yes. Yeah. Uh, but did, did, in your earlier life, did you feel this urge to return to no. Poland? No, 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 definitely so this is not. This very modern, a modern sort of feeling. Oh, sorry, more it, recent. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting topic. I, I think it's, a, it's an interesting topic because as a, when you're growing up, the sense of nation, the sense of community, it, it's very... So speaking English to my father, speaking Polish to my mother, my, my mother ensured and my grandmother actually ensured that, that her children spoke Polish, so my aunts and uncles and my mother, I mean, that was impressive in itself. And, and, and the fact that now my, my, that our mother taught us... And in fact, one of my cousins recently had children in the UK, so she's... My cousin, like me, is, is, is half English, half Polish. And her children 
are now only a quarter Polish, but she is right. teaching them Polish, and that she is they are the fifth generation to be born born abroad, and yet they're still learning, which is quite a feat in and of itself. But but generally, as you're growing up, I don't think you really have a sense of no, you that. Don't. I don't. It's I don't. a normal thing, exactly. right? Exactly. You just do. You are where you are, and that yes. seems pretty normal. And anyway, the gist of that was was I went to French school in London, and it all changed in 2004. As I started being, I was about 11, 12. A lot of my friends ended up having Polish cleaners and nannies. And in fact, it wasn't so much my attitude that changed, it was other people's attitude in school that changed towards that aspect of me. Uh, so in a sense, it was enforced by a sort of... I wasn't really bullied about it, but occasionally ve sort of vaguely teased. The, the implication was, oh, you're Polish-ish, you must be poor. <laughs> um, but and, and, would, you, know, you, would you like to clean our kitchen? <laughs> basically, yes. And in fact, once my, my mother, I, I remember this, as I still get irritated when I think of it. She was at a party. It was sort of a, a, a party of sort of various friends from school, so the parents of various friends. And um, there was a girl going around with a tray. And uh, someone looked at my mother and sort of said, oh, you're Polish, you should also be sort of carrying a tray. And, and my mother came back home very shocked. And I remember being, I was about 16 at the time, being infuriated by this and thinking that the man who said this should be challenged to a duel, which I, you know, obviously sort of overreaction on my part. But the, 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 the point I'm making is, is as, as I was growing up, no, it was a normal thing. We spoke Polish at home, we spoke French at school, and we spoke English with my father. And this was a normal. And then as I was a teenager, the, the, the comprehension of it was sort of, thrown upon me by having so many people have a, having a, not necessarily a negative reaction to Poland, but a, a stereotypical one of it being... Yeah, I think not, not so much negative, stereotypical is probably more... It wasn't, I don't really think, I don't think they were doing it, it wasn't done in a mean spirit, it was sort of, in a sense it was a sort of, you sort of joking around, and exactly. in the English, the English sense of joking around is very often, I mean, your best friends, you end up insulting them, as a sort of term of endearment in a sense. But I remember sort of taking it quite personally and then realizing that, in fact, there was no, no sense rejecting something I didn't know. And that actually propelled me on this journey of, of finding Poland and of, and of trying to find an identity, which I think is an incredibly important thing in life. And, and in fact, in a sense, when people ask me what I am, I say I am Polish, uh, which in a sense is, a, is a, obviously a, sh a shortcut way of answering the question. But I do genuinely, I have chosen Poland as my homeland. Okay. It is my home and it is my, it is the part of my identity that I, I spend the most time, it's, it's, it's what I, sort of, the sense of who I am and my ideals and my values mm -hmm. and my work. Right. I wanted to go towards Poland. Right, okay, and thank you. That's a good point to finish this section and then we'll hear more about your work shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Nicola.